I think he was under tremendous pressure to prove that he had a majority. And I think it was quite clear that with Parliament scheduled to sit in September, he did not have the majority and he would have very likely lost a vote of confidence. I also have to add that it is quite clear that the financial markets also agreed that he had to go because after his resignation speech yesterday, the KLCI actually went up. So that's the reason why you see the KLCI rebounding today. That's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, we've been watching it slowly creep up throughout the morning. So certainly it does seem like some confidence has been restored, even though that might seem strange. However, this list of candidates that the king is now going to vet through is long and complicated. Can you give us a sense of the lay of the land there in terms of contenders for the role? Sure. So under Malaysia's constitution, in a situation like this, the king has absolute discretion. I think it's commonly referred to as the captain's pick. So the only requirement is that this person will have to be MP or member of the lower house. Other than that, the king can pick anybody who he believes commands the confidence of parliament. In terms of the actual people that he has to pick, in practical terms, of course, he'll be looking at political party leaders. So there's about half a dozen of them who will qualify under this. And he also have to look at whether this person can put together a sustainable coalition because, as you know, Muyadin's coalition collapsed after 17 months. So I don't think he wants to go through uh, that experience again. So in terms of the people who can put together a sustainable coalition, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, who do you think has the most confidence of parliament? Right, right now, I would say that uh, it's basically between two blocks. The first block is basically Anwar Ibrahim, the old Pakatan Harapan government, which fell apart in February 2020. And on the other side, the current government, uh, the current block, uh, essentially the front runner is a guy called Sabri Ismail, the former deputy prime minister, plus an old politician by the name of Tunku Razali. These are the front runners. But as I mentioned, you... there's nothing to stop the king from selecting another MP. Do you think that it's very unlikely that Mahathir Mohamed would make a comeback given the current public sentiment towards him? I think uh, it's possible that he'll make a comeback, but the way I describe it is that he will be a very, very last name on the long list. Uh, as saying if the king were to select him to put together a coalition government, it's because they've exhausted all the choices for all the other candidates. He is extremely unpopular on the ground because the majority of Malaysians blame him for the current crisis. So the thinking is that if he had not resigned last year, we would not have the Muyering administration and we wouldn't be in the current political mess.